Hey guys, Smitty here with Just Pillin' Barbecue. It's a Wednesday afternoon right after work, and I want to show you that you can do uh, cooking in your backyard on a weekday. You don't have to go out to a fast food restaurant or go pick up something from a restaurant. You can cook in the backyard, and it's going to be better for you, and it's going to taste better. Today we got a, like a three and a half, three and a quarter pound cowboy steak that we're going to reverse sear on the Yoder YS640S pellet smoker. Stay tuned. <laughs> Oh, so what I've done is I've got the top rack still on because we're going to put that cowboy steak on this side on the top because there's the smokestack and that smoke is going to exit this smokestack and come right over that steak and kiss it with that smoke. Less quality made uh, pellet smokers, they may have smoke coming out of the lid, they may have smoke coming out of all kinds of places. The only place that the Yoder let smoke out is on that chimney. So the smoke's gonna be coming across the steak. Now I have taken out the regular grill grates on this side and installed the grill grate brand grill grates. So after we get some smoke on this thing and it gets up to about 110 degrees internal, I'm gonna remove the direct grilling plate and then put these back and we're going to sear that thing off on these grill grates. So at first, I'm gonna start up the Yoder and we are going to put it on 225 degrees and we're gonna cook it at 225 degrees till an internal temperature of about 110 degrees, 105, 110 degrees, somewhere like that. When we reverse sear it, we're gonna look for a temperature of about 135 degrees. So now while this is heating up, let's go inside and season up that steak. All right, so here's our cowboy steak. It's probably a good two and a half, maybe three inches thick, a little over three pounds. It is a choice, but it looks really good. We're gonna make it even better. So we're gonna start out with a binder. I've got a little bit of W sauce left over from that brisket cook and figured this would be really good for a binder. W sauce is really good on beef anyway. So we're gonna put a little bit of that on there and slather it around all over to give us a good place for that rub to stick. Now I have not trimmed this at all. By the way, I got this from Wild Fork Foods. Uh, they, they are not a sponsor. Uh, they did not send me this. I bought it with my own money, but I've gotten meat from them multiple times and I highly recommend their meats. All right, now, for seasoning, we're gonna be using Cattleman Grills Trail Dust. A good coarse rub on beef, I love it. And uh, that's what we're gonna go with. And we're gonna, this is a lot of meat, so I'm gonna put a decent amount of seasoning on it because it can take it. I'm gonna pat it in, get all the edges. Even the bones, this is a bone in. Again, we're gonna press it in. Now, we're gonna let it sit and just kinda get happy right there. Let some of that rub pull some of that moisture out and get it ready to put on. As soon as we come up to temperature, we'll get it on. All right guys, the, the Yoder YS640 is up to temperature. We're gonna go ahead and put the steak on. And just like I said, we're gonna put this big old steak right over here where the smoke will come right across the top of it. We're also gonna utilize the meat probe with the Yoder and we're gonna go right in the middle roughly about halfway, and we're going to monitor it until it gets to about 110 degrees internal temperature. All right, guys, we've reached 110 degrees internal temperature. We're fixing to pull it off, crank up the temperature so we can get this sear on. But before I do that, I brought out a couple of things that are gonna be needed for the sear process. 
And I'm gonna leave a link to these kind of things uh, in the description box, just go right down there. Affiliate links down there, they help the channel. So if you're interested in those things, check them out. I've got a, uh, a burger press or a steak press. Now this one was made by a friend of mine, but I'll put a link to one that I've also used in the past. A Thermoworks Thermopop or some kind of temperature gauge along with some wipes. These things are absolutely amazing. They're a lot thicker than regular Clorox wipes and they're a lot bigger. I've got an E-Tech City uh, infrared thermometer so I can check to see my grill grates, what kind of temperature I've run, I'm running on those. Tongs, gloves, glove liners, um, and a little mat that I'm fixing to put the steak on. Look down in the description box if you're interested in any of that stuff. Let's go ahead and see what this thing looks like. Ooh, man, that thing looks good. Take that off, we won't need that one anymore. Oh, baby. All right, we're gonna put it right there on that rack and just let it hang out for a minute until I get the rest of the grill set up for the searing aspect of this cook. All right, so the first thing that I've done is I've removed the top rack because we're not gonna need it anymore. I've removed the, that temp probe because we're not gonna use that for the searing process. I'm gonna slide my grill grates over and I'm gonna remove that door. Keep in mind that that door is gonna be hot. We're gonna move it out of the way. And then we're gonna slide our grill grates back. Now the only other thing to do is crank up that temperature. We're gonna crank it up to 500 degrees, which should take those grill grates to over 600 degrees. We'll go 500, there we go. Now we're gonna let these grill grates heat up. I'm gonna take a little cooking spray and spray those grill grates so we don't have anything sticking to them. And then uh, as soon as it comes up to temperature, we're gonna get this sear on. All right, so because this steak is so thick, we're gonna go two minutes, twist it, two minutes, flip it over and do the same thing. We're running 570 degrees on the pit right now. So I believe it's hot enough. Can your pellet grill do that? Here we go. Two minutes. All right, that's two minutes. Time to twist it. We're gonna keep the weight on it. And give it a turn. Get the lid closed for two more minutes. All right, two more minutes. Now it's time to flip it. I got my glove liners on, so I'm gonna set that to that side. Get it released, flip it over. Ooh, wee! Start the two minutes. Now we need to twist it for the last time. I forgot to put the weight on it last time. Y'all didn't remind me. So there we go. All right, that's the last two minutes. Let's pull the weight off and see what the temperature is. Let's flip her back over. And... Ooh-wee! See what the internal is. I'm looking for around 135. Oh, look at that. 136. We're gonna call it good. So now, we're gonna take the steak, put it back on the rack. I've got some melted butter here with a little bit of Malcolm Reed's Italian staying. So while it rests, I'm gonna let that butter melt over the top and then it's gonna be time to eat. All right guys, we've been resting for about 15 minutes. This thing smells amazing and I'm ready to cut into it and see how we did. So 
with further ado, let's get into it. A big steak deserves a big knife. And I'm just gonna cut it straight across the middle and see how we did. Hopefully it's on the money. And this is a choice. I'd say that's pretty dang good, probably a medium. And as it sits, it's gonna pink up more and more. Man, that thing looks good. But now the important part, how does it taste? How does it taste? Oh, there's a little bit of that spinalis right there too. It's tender. It is tender. Mm. That is delicious. Mmm. The crust is perfect, but the seasoning somehow, I mean, it is seasoned well all the way through the whole piece of meat. And that is a thick piece of meat. I mean, that's thick, as if y'all couldn't already see it. Do not go out during the week, fast food, restaurants. Pick up a couple of steaks, a couple of potatoes, sweet potatoes, and cook at home. This is not very hard. Till next time, we'll be piddling. See you. Delicious.